Good morning, students. Today we will look at um, the paper May, June 2012, and its variation 21 from IGC's Mathematics. <coughs> okay, sorry for my cough. Let's jump in and start right with the paper. Okay. Um, question 1 says, the price of a ticket for a football match is $124. Calculate the amount received when 76,500 tickets were sold. So we know we will have 76,500 times 124 because it's one ticket is $124. If I type that into my calculator, I get 9,48600. Zero. Yes, that's right. Okay, so nine, four, eight, six, one, two, three zeros. Now they ask us in question B, write your answer in standard form. Well, standard form is a digit, decimal place, non-zero digits, as many as we are, times ten to a power, and <coughs> we have nine point four eight six times ten. Now I just have to count the power, what's the power? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we do the power 6, 10 to the power 6. Good, so I can move my paper up. Um, Gregor changed the $700 into euros when the rate is 1 euro for $1.4131. So this is a unit converter. I'm just going to write my $700. We want to convert it to the amount of um, euros. And so euros need to be in the numerator and dollars in the denominator. And that I can tap in my calculator. Dollars and dollars will cancel out. And I will be left with euros 495.36. Four nine five point three six euros. Okay, the next question says factorize completely. Here I say I have fifteen and twenty four. I know three can be factored out of both of them. I see I have a p squared and a p t. I can factor out the p. I'll be I will be left with some numbers. So what times three p would give me fifteen p squared. It would be five p. What times 3p would give me 24t? It would be 8t. And that is for factorization done. The next question says, order the following numbers smallest first. So I've got to rewrite those numbers first in um, a decimal form so that I can actually see what is greater and least. The, the 8 over 17 is 0 0.47058. Um, the square root of 0 0.22 is 0 0.469. Tan 25 is 0 0.4663. Um, 0 0.466669, 66, so 663 would be first. Um, that would be second. 0 0.47 would be third and that one fourth. So I write the original number down. Turn 25, 2 is square root 0 0.22, 3 is 0 0.47, 4 is 8 over 17. We're down with the first page. <coughs> Let's page around. It's over. Good. Here we have the calculate. Uh, um, here we have a triangle with some sides and an angle, and we want to find a, a opposite side from this. Well, let's write our rhyme down. So, ka, towa. Um, I have an hypotenuse, and I want an opposite. So I need to work with sine. So sine of fifty three point two equals opposite that can be x and hypotenuse that is 29 now i multiply by 29 on both sides so x is going to be um, 29 sine 53.2 degrees i tap that into my calculator 
and I get 23.2 and that is for length centimeter x would be centimeter um, 23.2 centimeters okay question 9 reads Leon scores for following marks in five tests 8 4 8 and a sum number y and 9 his mean mark is 7.2 calculate the value of y so we know that if we have mean um, mean is for mean is for sum of a numbers divided by the number of numbers so mean is for sum of a numbers 8 plus 4 plus 8 plus y plus 9 over how many numbers 1 2 3 4 5 okay I want to solve now for y so I'm going to multiply on both sides by 5 to free this from the denominator so 36 equals and I add all the known numbers up 29 plus y then I minus by 29 on both sides so y would be 7 and that's my answer okay the next question reads the sides of a rectangle are 60 uh, 6.3 so let's just quickly draw our rectangle it is 6.3 and 4.8 centimeters each correct to one decimal place calculate the upper bound for the area of a rectangle well we want the area so we know that we need length times width okay but we first have to find what is the upper bound and lower bound so if i have 6.3 my upper bound would be if i add 0.5 to it it would be 6.35 um 0 0.05 sorry um so it's one more decimal place more at a, a half of it and the 4.8 is also one more decimal place so it's 0 uh, 4.85 okay now length times width so area length times width so we will have the upper bound area 6.35 times 4.85 and then i can do the calculation i get 30.79 seven five and i write the full answer just as it is okay the next question says r is um find r when five to the power r over three equals 125 so let's look at what is 125 125 is five twenty five 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 so 125 is actually 5 cubed. Okay, so we have 5 r to the power 3, um, r 5 to the power r over 3 equals 5 to the power 3. If the bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal to one another. So r over 3 equals 3. I multiply on both sides by 3, so r equals 9. Okay. The next question, just want to get my um, protractor and compass. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I've got the tools needed. Um, they ask us to uh, the point C. The point C lies on AD lies on this AD somewhere here such that angle A B C is 67 degrees so I've got to draw it as 67 there is my B there is my 0 okay so 10 20 40 50 60 65 66 67 there we go and draw the angle okay so there we go so angle c would be over there or point c would be over there okay 
Now they ask us, using a straight edge on compass only, construct the perpendicular bisector of AB. So we want to find the, con the perpendicular bisector of AB. Show clearly all your construction arcs. And let's quickly do that. Okay, just open my protractor. Put the, make sure that it's more than halfway. Do a little bit more. Okay. There, put the, the point there. Make an arc. Do the same there. Make an arc. Put the point there at exactly at B. Make an arc. Make an arc. Okay. Now I've got to join those two lines. Or those two arc. Uh, the places where the two arcs intersect. There you go. Okay, there we're going. And this is the perpendicular bisector of AB. And I'm done with that. Okay, good. Let's move on to question 10. Okay, Sheena invested um, $750 um, at a rate of 2.5% simple interest. Calculate the total amount she now has after five years. So I know that simple interest equals the principal times the rate times the time over a hundred. So that would give me the principal is 750. My rate is 2.5. My time is five per year. It's all per year over a hundred. And I do the calculation. And I get 93.75. Okay, but that's only the simple interest. So her total would be the simple interest plus the principal. So 93.75 plus the 750. And I do that on my calculator and I get 843.75 as an answer. Okay, let's move to the next one. <clears throat> solve the simultaneous equation. So I've got 3x plus 5y equals 24 and x plus 7y equals 56. I can do two methods. I would like to do the um, elimination method. So I'm going to uh, multiply this bottom um, uh, equation with, five, for, with 3 so that I can eliminate the x's. So x plus 7y equals 56. I multiply this whole equation by 3. That would give me 3x plus 21y equals 3 times 56 is 168. Okay, now we can subtract the two equations from one another. So 3x plus 5y equals 24. I'm going to subtract that whole equation from it. 3x minus 3x is going to be 0. 21 minus 5 will give me 16y, 168 minus 24 will give me 144. I divide on both sides by 16 and I get y equals 9. I can fill that in. Now we need to go back to one of the original equations and substitute it back in. I've selected this, this one that's simpler, x plus 7y equals 56. So x plus 7 and my y value is 9. And now I just have to solve for x, and this is 63. So 56 minus 63 would give me negative 7. And that is the end of question 11. We're moving on nicely. Okay, we're working without a calculator. Work out 1 over 5 over 6 plus 9 over 10. You must show all your working and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. Okay, so 1 and 5 over 6, I'm going to first uh, convert that back to a mixed number before I, you don't have to do it, but I often do that. And that would give me 11 over 6 plus 9 over 10. Now, my common denominator I know would be 30, so I'm going to multiply this one with um, 3 over 3 and that side with um, 5 over 5. That would give me 50, and 30, and 55, and 27. 
If I do the calculation there, I will get 82 over 30, and that would be equal to 2 and 22 over 30. By 22 over 30, I know that I can divide by um, 2 again, so it would be 2 and 11 over 15, and that's my final answer. As I said, there's a variety of ways to do this. Um, as long as you've shown all your steps clearly and precisely, you'll be fine. Okay, why is inversely proportional to x squared? Okay, so y is inversely proportional to x squared. Now I'm just going to put a number k there. Okay, um, so I've got to now follow v so that I can find what is the value of k. So when y is 3, k, um, x is 4. Okay, now I'm just going to solve for k. So k would be 3 times 4 squared. That would give me 48. Okay, now um, I need to find the, well, find the value of y when x is 5. So I'll substitute the value of 48 in there. And that would be 5 squared. So y, if I do the calculation, would be 1.92. 1 Number 14, question number 14. So it says the region of R contains a point that satisfies these inequalities. Y is smaller or equal to a half x plus 4, y is greater or equal to 3, and x plus y is greater or equal to 6. So first of all, let's establish where the lines lie. This is um, plus 4, so I can, I can see this is a positive line, so this line would be y is smaller or equal to a half x plus 4. Well, this is the line where it cuts the y-axis at 3, so that would be y is greater or equal to 3. And the only other line that leads left over is this one, x plus y is greater or equal to 6. Now my next step is I'm selecting a point, any point that's not on the line, and I'm, and I'm just going to check each one of them Will it satisfy this point or not? Will it be satisfied by this point? Um, so this one, 1 is um, smaller or equal to a half plus 4. Is this the truth? Yes, it is the truth. So from this line, this region will be satisfied. So I'm going to shade that side. Okay, now the next one, um, this, uh, this line over here, if I substitute it in, 1 is greater or equal to 3. Is this the truth? Is 1 greater or equal to 3? No. So this region would n from this line would not satisfy my equal inequality. So I'm going to show you that. Okay. Now... This line over here, we're going to see about that. And we'll ask if it's set 1 plus 1, just substitute the values of that point into the equation. Is 2 greater or equal to 6? No, it is not. So from that line, this side will not be satisfying the, e uh, the equality, so I'll shade it. So the region that will satisfy my inequalities are this one over there. Okay, so let's look at the next question. The scale of a map 1 to 500,000, um, so it's 1 centimeter to 500 centimeters, or 500,000 centimeters, or 1 kilometer to 500,000 kilometers. So the actual distance between two towns is 172 kilometers. Calculate the distance in centimeters between the towns. So 172 kilometers. We know that we have to work it to um, centimeters first. So a thousand meters, one kilometer, and a hundred centimeters, one meter. That would give me 172 and some five zeros one two three four five zeros okay 
now I want to see how many centimeters would it be. So one, seven, two, one, two, three, four, five over that. So there's one, two, three, four, five zeros. Five zeros. And I will have one, seven, two, two divided by five. That would give me 34.4 centimeters okay but next question the area of a lake is 12 centimeters squared so there my, is my area calculate the actual area of a lake in kilometers so i know that if i move one centimeter here i will move 500,000 centimeters there okay so what is a centimeter what is 500,000 in terms of kilometers um 500,000 we know is five kilometers because look there we had 172 and there was added five zeros so that would be five kilometers so if i have 12 centimeters here i can move the same distance as 500,000 centimeters that's the same thing as five kilometers but it is centimeters so squared so i need to mul multiply it with twice five kilometers okay times five kilometers so just to make this a little bit easier i leave out the units and that would be 12 times 5 squared would be 300 okay let's move to the next question a matrix question you're doing very well so just keep going um m n m n just means that we multiply matrix m with matrix n so 5, negative 3, 2, 4, and negative 1, 2, negative 2, 6. Means that I multiply the first row with the first column. So 5 times negative 1 plus 2 times 2. The first row with the second column. Um, 5 times negative 2 plus 2 times 6. Now my bottom row. My second row with the first column, negative 3 times negative 1 plus 4 times 2. And uh, the next one, negative 3 uh, times negative 2 plus 4 times 6. Okay, I need to do the calculations there. So let's see, negative 5. Uh, where did I make a wrong thingy there? The first negative three times negative one, that's right. Four times two, that's fine. Okay, it seems like I've done it right this time. Okay, good. So that we will have um, negative five plus four, that would give me negative one. Um, we will have uh, negative ten plus 12 that would give me 2 we there we have 3 plus 8 that would give me 11 and here we have 4 times so it would be 6 times 24 um oh, 6 plus 24 that would give us 50 and that is my matrix good now let's move to the matrix the inverse of a matrix m inverse we know the inverse of a two by two matrix is a d minus b c one over the uh, um, uh, a d minus b c and this matrix would be d a minus b minus c okay now let's fill it in a is uh, of my m is uh, 5 times d that is 4 minus my b value is 2 and my c c value is negative 3 and now i just move these around so 4 and 5 negative 2 and 3 and i do the calculation there it would be 1 over 26 because i have 20 plus 6 there it would be 26 1 over 26 and my matrix 4, 3, negative 2, 5 stays as it is. Okay.
Good, so now here we have to make W the, the formula. I am going to multiply on both sides of this denominator. So we will have W plus 3 times C equals 4 plus W. Just to get rid of that denominator. Now distribute. So C, W plus 3C equals 4 plus W. I'm going to move all the W's to the one side and all the other terms that's not related to W to the other side. So we will have C, W minus W equals 4 minus 3C. Now factor out the W. So C minus 1, 4 minus 3C, and divide by C minus 1 on both sides. So W would be 4 minus 3C over C minus 1. Okay, question 18. Okay, <clears throat> question 18 reads, the diagram shows the speed time graphs for the first 120 seconds of a car journey, and we check our units in seconds, we check our units mean meters per second, so thankfully we can um, work with it just as it is, we don't have to first um, correct the, so that the units are the same. Calculate the acceleration of a car during the first 25 seconds. So it's the acceleration on this first bit. So we know the acceleration is the same thing as the gradient. The gradient we know is delta y over delta x. And if I look at delta y, my y value starts at 0. So the maximum y is 20. And my x value is 25. I can simplify that as 0 0.8 and that would be my meters per second squared. That's the acceleration, 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Okay, calculate the distance traveled by the car in the first 120 seconds. So here I would like to just divide this into little units so that the, I, I know the distance of a speed time graph is the area under the curve. So let us quickly just divide it into little regions. So this is region A, B, C, and D. Okay, so A, we know it's a, a triangle. I'll move it up. Okay, so it's a half base times height. Plus B is a rectangle, base times height. C is a little triangle, a half base times height. And D is a, a rectangle, base times height. I have to um, fill these values in a half. My base there is 25, my height is 20. Plus, um, my base there is, let me quickly check, 25 to 55, that would give me 30 times 20, a half. My little base there is only 10, and my height is only 5, and my base there is 120 minus 55, that would give me 65 times 15. Okay, I tap this whole thing in my calculator, and I got 1850. Okay. Just a note there, you may divide these into areas that pleases you, different shapes, doesn't matter, as long as you recount for every area, you will find the distance traveled in the 120 seconds. Okay, question 19, okay, here we have a vector question. O is the origin, O, P, Q, R, S, T is a regular hexagon, that means that all the sides would be equal in length. And OP is P and OT is T. So let's quickly do that. OP, I'm going to make all the o, all, all the vectors that are the same as OP blue. And that one, and that one. Let's just put the direction in as well, okay? And all the vectors that are the same as OT, I'm going to make orange. All of them that are the same that looks exactly the same. Okay, now it's easy. I can travel on only the known roads, so I know all the blue ones would be P and all the 
orange ones would be T. So we want to go from P to T. So I can go negative P plus T. Negative P plus T. And that's my answer. T is a little bit skew. Now we want to go from P to R. So I want to travel from P all the way to R. So I can only go on the vectors, the roads that I know. So that would give me an uh, orange one, T plus T plus a P. So it'd be T plus T plus a P. That would give me P plus 2T. Okay. The next one is for position of vector r. If I say position of vector r, I know it will start from the origin, from o. So I want to go from o to r. I can't go directly because there's no name on that road. I have to travel the zigzag, zigzag way. So I'm going to go t plus p plus p plus t. Okay. It doesn't matter which way we followed, we will still get that that's two, a P and a P and a T and a T. There we have a T, P, P, T, the same. And we can go a variety of ways. We will still find it exactly the same way. So it's two T's, one, two T's and two P's or two P's uh, and two T's or a P, T, T, P. It will still stay the same. So we can conclude that it would be um, from O to R would be T, um, T plus P plus P plus, plus T. So it would be two T's plus two P's. And we are done. <coughs> it's a good idea to mark your vectors with a different color. Um, if you can see them very easily now. And um, it's just roads that you have to follow. Okay. The next question is a question with six marks. Um, a lot of people battle with this one. Um, the main idea is to read the question carefully. R and T are points on the circle with a center O and a radius of P, uh, 5 centimeters. PR and PT are tangents to the circle. Tangents means that from the center of a circle to the point of tangency, would be a 90 degree angle so immediately we are given some information here and angle um, this angle pot equals 78 now if i've drawn a point of to the if i've drawn a point of ta um, connect the line from an external point to a point of tangency to the circle for any place on the circle these two lines are going to be exactly the same okay so we actually have two congruent triangles i know that they would be the same this is the same so we have an uh, um, line 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 or side 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 and that means that this angle there would also be 78 degrees okay um so then now a thin rope goes from p to r around the major arc and then back to P, calculate the length of a rope. So I'm first going to find what is the length of this rope here. So for that little triangle. So that's 78, that is, and that one is five. We want to find this length, this one. So so good, so well. I don't want, I don't have anything about the hypotenuse and I don't want it. I want to find this opposite side, so I'm going to use a tan. So tan of 78 degrees equals opposite, that is x, over my adjacent, that is 5. So x would be 5 tan 78. And if I plug that into my calculator, let me quickly just do that. Just hold on a second. 20. 23.5 um, degree uh, centimeters centimeters just get the units right okay um, so let's fill it in here in our sketch 23.5 and we know that one 23.5 so now we need to find this major arc 
okay? Um, to find this major arc, I know that I need to find the, a, the degree measure of the major arc. So we had 306 degrees for a full circle, minus 78 plus 78, that would give me 204 degrees. So this major arc is 204 degrees. It looks like a 3 there, it is a 2. Okay, 204 degrees. Now um, we we need to find we need to calculate it. I'm just going to move my paper up slightly. Sorry that you can't see the sketch now. Okay, so um, we know the arc length over the circumference of a circle would be the degree measure over 360. That would give me arc length over the circumference of a circle is uh, pi uh, circumference of a circle 2 pi r the degree measure is 204 over 360 okay so this arc length equals 204 over 360 times 2 pi that is now and the radius is 5 let's quickly plug that in our calculator so 204 360 times 2 times pi times 5 that would give me 17.8 so that's 17.8 okay now um, we need to find what is the, the total rope length so the rope length let me move it up would be 23.5 plus 23.5 plus my 17.8 and we can quickly do that plus 23.5 that would give me 64.8 centimeters 2 pi r the arc length yeah circumference of a circle yes okay good so let's move on to the next question um, I think it's the last one, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. Okay, so first here, I am quickly going to draw the, um, just on a separate sheet of paper, and I'm going to quickly draw the, the tree diagram. Um, let me read the question. In this question, you are given all your answers as fractions. Um, a box contains three red pencils, two blue pencils, and four green pencils. Write you choose two pencils at random without replacement. So, one, two, three. So you have red, blue, and green pens. Then he selects another one. So, red, blue, green. Red, blue, green. Let me move it up. Red, blue, green. So he has three red pens. Pencil so three out of nine because it's a total of nine pencils. Two out of nine blue ones and four out of nine green ones. He selects a red one, so it would be one less pencil red and one less pencil. And those would stay the same okay he selects a blue one so the blues would be one out of eight the red ones will stay three out of eight that would be four out of eight he selects a green one so the green one would be three out of eight those would be two out of eight and three out of eight okay now we can answer all the questions without doubting that we will have it right right so the first question is they are both red okay so it's easy it must be red and red so three nines times 
two eights. So the probability that it would be red and red would be, um, and is always times, it would be 3 over 9 times 2 over 8. And if I do the calculation, I get 1 over 12. Um, so they say you yeah, give your answer as a fraction. So we've got to just keep it there. Okay. They are both of the same color. So they can be red and red or blue and blue or green and green. Okay. So the probability of red and red or the probability of blue and blue or the probability of green and green. So let's fill it in. That would be 3 over 9 times 2 over 8 plus 2 over 9 times 1 over 8 plus 4 over 9 times 3 over 8. I type that whole thing in my calculator and I have 5 over 18 as an answer. Okay. The next one says exactly one of the two pencils are green. So we will have the red and the green because one of them is green. We have a blue and a green. And here for the green ones, I have green and red and green and blue. Okay, let's write that down. So it's a probability of a red and green plus the probability of a blue and a green plus the probability of a green and a red plus the probability of a green and a blue. Okay, now let's um, write it in. It would be 3 over 9 times 4 over 8 plus 2 over 9 times 4 over 8 plus 4 over 9 times 3 over 8 plus 4 over 9 times 2 over 8. And I tap that into my calculator, I got 5 over 9. So 5 over 9. And that's the end and the conclusion of this paper. Um, please work through these questions carefully. This is very similar than the, but the, than the paper that you will receive on Friday for your mini exam. Um, work steadily through this week and um, I'm sure you're going to score those good marks. See you on Friday.